Hey there, this is Doug. This is Carrie. <laughs> Welcome to episode two. Today we're going to show you our search criteria for searching for our off grid property. Yeah, so we're gonna start out with laws. One of the most important things that you're gonna to wanna to look at when you're searching for property is off-grid property laws. They vary state to state, county to county, and even city to city. It's sometimes better to look at property that's in an unincorporated area. They typically are gonna have less laws, but you really wanna look at that. And a good example of that is here in Colorado, it actually used to be illegal to collect rainwater. And I mean, like the water that's falling on your own roof, it was illegal to collect that until just a few years ago. They changed it and so now you can actually collect the rainwater on your roof, which we're doing now. And then we go ahead and go, it goes into a rain barrel and then we use that and repurpose it to water our yard and things like that. So. Laws are super important. You Before you buy any property, really thoroughly research that. You'll wanna look at how your property is zoned with, uh, you'll find that usually at the county level. And that's just, I can't even stress enough how important that is because if you purchase property, say in a neighborhood type situation, even if they're very large pieces of property, like say 10 acres, they can still have neighborhood HOA laws within those neighborhoods that prevent you from doing maybe what you want to do with the property. Some parts of the country are super, super strict and some are not. So you just want to research your local laws, county, city, and then off-grid laws for the state. That's really important. Yeah, and one of our search criteria is obviously climate. We want to have, we're not sure if we want to live where there's going to be snow in the winter or if we want to avoid snow altogether. And one thing I gotta just say is our two rebels are outside. I think this is gonna be a theme, having the dogs barking in the background because there's no other way in suburbia to keep them any further, but we love our pets, so they're part of the crew, so. <laughs> okay, so back to it. Temperature is also another thing that we are extremely um, fixed on. Do we want hot weather? Do we want humid weather? How cold do we want to live in during winter time? I grew up in Montreal and upstate New York where it can get negative 60. I don't really particularly want to go back to that. I've had enough of it in 20 years. So personally for me, I would be more apt to search for somewhere like Florida where it's warm or maybe Arizona or New Mexico or something like that. It's pretty nice here in Colorado too in the in the winter time especially we have nice sunny days and it's not too cold but that's just one thing you want to search for looking for off-grid property um, another thing is grow zone and this is particularly for those gardeners out there if you're wanting to live off-grid and not have to go to the grocery store every day and you want to grow your own vegetables or fruit trees or something like that that's something you're going to have to consider because some places because of the grow zone it's a USDA grow zone. It's uh, usually, I think it's one through 12. One would be like the North Pole, 12 would be like the Amazon. We're here around in Colorado, we're about 6B or 6A. So that's right down the middle pretty much. But anywhere that I would be interested in looking for, I'm looking for somewhere with a higher grow zone than 6A. The other thing that you might want to look for is natural disasters of course because you might end up purchasing property down tornado lane or like florida you might be in hurricane zones or if you're up in the north idaho or something like that you might uh, be expecting some blizzards but that's just something you want to keep in mind uh, natural disasters occur almost everywhere in the country you just got to see what you're going to be prone to in that area that you happen to be looking at. Yeah, definitely. Good advice. So next on our, our search criteria list is proximity to our current address. Uh, so we're actually 
looking at lots of different places, but we've, we've kind of narrowed our search to pretty close to Colorado. We are making some exceptions to some outliers that are a little bit further away, but it's really important to us to be able to get to the property fairly easily and reasonably quick. We don't wanna to have to drive two or three days to get to our property. The great thing about being in Denver is we are pretty central in the country. You can jump on a plane and get almost anywhere within just a few hours. And as far as driving though, we really kind of want to keep it within a day drive, if not less. So that's going to be a big uh, important part for us. The other thing too is where our kids are located. We mentioned on our other video that we've raised four kids and they are all adults. We don't have grandkids yet, but are hoping and expecting maybe someday we will. So that's a factor as well. We want to make sure that we're somewhat close or drivable within um, where our family members live if possible so that's and, important and perhaps even if you're not within driving distance how about having an airport maybe within an hour or two away mm -hmm. that you can at least go visit your family via flying you know yeah definitely so the next thing i'd like to discuss is your natural resources some states might provide timber on the land so that you would be able to get a milling machine uh, harbor freight sells one for less than two grand and you can mill out all of your wood for your house that's if you're assuming you're going to build a wood house also consider like if is there stone on the property you're going to be able to use that for putting edges on your garden or something like that if that's what you want to do is it going to be desert where there's no resources whatsoever there's no trees there's no rocks or they could be rocks but mostly sand also water would be a consideration is there going to be flowing water on your land or is there going to be swamp on your land is it uh, barren of land altogether are you going to have to come up with some kind of rain harvesting system all these things you want to consider uh, the natural resources on there is there animals is there wildlife there that you could actually hunt and feed your family with the food that's on the land itself um, also you want to know about the natural vegetation that grows there is it edible is it poisonous these are just some of the things you might want to consider. Yeah, definitely. And another thing I was thinking about that we'll definitely be considering, we hadn't really put it in our notes, but I was thinking about also predators in the area and what you want to deal with because you're going to deal with predators no matter where you live. It's not escapable. If you're thinking about going off grid, up to Alaska, then you are gonna have to know how to deal with things like bears. That's not something that I particularly wanna de deal with, so we're gonna try to avoid those situations. I don't mind predators as long as they're smaller than me. So that's a big consideration for us as the predators in the area and how that could impact your livestock and what types of means you're gonna have to take to protect your things that you're growing and your animals if you do end up keeping animals. So predators, I think I wanna include in that part of our uh, part of our talk. And this just kind of jumps into maybe a future video. Being a homesteader, you wanna have really good hygiene, not just washing your hands, but not leaving things that predators are attracted to on your property. But I digress, that'll be something else in the future. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about that, especially after we pick out the property that we're gonna end up buying and We'll talk a lot about what's specific to wherever we end up and share with you what we find out because I think that's really, really important. So brings us to our next topic, which I'm going to speak to because I've got quite a bit of experience as a, small, as a small business owner, and that would be small business laws. And the reason why we're bringing this up and having it be part of our conversation today is that the small business laws for us are very important because we, even though we're on the other side of, of, of 40, <laughs> pretty far away from 40, but we're not ready to retire. So we do need to continue to work and make an income. Our goal with, our, with this off-grid situation that we're going into is going to be be able to run our own business um, from our off-grid property and make a living or at least a part-time living doing that to kind of supplement because you're still going to need money you're still going to need something coming in or something to fall back on so small business laws are very important you want to research that because again just like any other laws they're very strict in some states 
very lenient in other states and then it goes county to county city to city again just like your property laws so you'll want to research that if you're planning on starting any kind of small business on your homestead make sure that you research that very carefully and know what you're getting into before you commit to buying to the property yeah and another thing is this might not be a concern to you but what is the state's political affiliation in general and typically in larger cities, it's going to be more or less Democrat, right? But out in the countryside of almost every state, it typically is Republican. So you as an off-gridder are probably going to be more or less in a Republican area, even though the state might be dominantly Democratic or Republican, whichever affiliation interests you. Uh, just consider that. If you plan on having a, a bunch of guns and you enjoy those things that aren't so much accepted in the in the bluer states then maybe you want to look off grid in a in a red state that's all i'm saying i think the along with that and this is really our last piece to looking at property ourselves and that is going to be taxes affordability and cost of living overall you'll find a, a, and again just like with cities versus country living you're going to find higher taxes and more expensive taxes in the cities of course and less expensive in the country although what we've seen in the preliminary research we've done is there are are states within our united states that are known for being inexpensive and and less expensive to live in cost of living is just lower but if you start looking at property taxes, uh, income taxes and things like that, you can get pretty expensive, even in states that are known for a low cost of living overall. So taxes are really important, especially since we're moving into, not we're not seniors, but we're moving in that direction. So we wanna look at taxes for seniors and what kind of tax breaks are available as we age because it's where we'll plant our roots and be for a while. So you wanna look at affordability, just generally affordability for the whole, typically it's gonna be for the whole state when you look them up, but you can drill down to certain areas and kind of see where you get more bang for your buck. So that's something that you'll definitely wanna to, want to research really carefully as well. So I think that wraps it up for this episode two. Is there anything you wanna to add to that? No. Thank you. Okay. I think we caught it all. Of course, if you have questions or feel like, hey, you should have talked about this or you should have thought about this, feel free to put it in the comments and we will address it in a later video or we'll reply to your comment. We always appreciate another perspective. So we appreciate you tuning in today. If you found this information helpful and you think that it might be something that could be helpful for you, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Give our video a like. We appreciate that as we're building our channel. I want to go ahead and let you know that in our next video, we're going to continue our series on searching for off-grid property. So our uh, episode three is going to be delving into Colorado and Idaho. Those are the first two states we're going to go ahead and evaluate because we live here in Colorado and that would be really convenient. So we're going to check those two states out first. So stay tuned. Bye. See ya.